Well, I'm Lee Maxwell. I'm a retired professor of electrical engineering. That's longer ago than I can remember almost. Uh, simultaneous with that retirement, I took up the hobby of uh, collecting and restoring antique washing machines. Uh, what started out as a whim kind of turned in over the years as an obsession. I now have some 1,400 units, and so my main concern now is the history of washing machines, and that's what I do. The first step in the development of the washing machine uh, came right when people started to wash their clothes and they would use either just their hands, their feet, or simple sticks, rocks, and stone and beat the clothes with those very simplest of tools. They would also just use the clothes themselves to flail against a rock for cleaning. And that method of washing is the way that most people on this planet still do washing. The next step in the sophistication of washing machines was the making of the dollies and the vacuum stomps and perhaps even the, the washboard. These were a little more sophisticated than actual sticks and stones, but they still involved a very significant amount of hand-operated washing. This second phase of the development involved no gearing or mechanical construction. They were typically just single units. The next phase, the third phase I call it, in the development of washing machine involved putting gearing and levers and so on. It kind of coincided with the Industrial Revolution where people were actually making more mechanical kinds of things and these involved gears and levers, as I say, and they adapted the vacuum washer and the dolly to be agitation units for these machines. And uh, typically the machines, and we're talking the late 1700s, early 1800s, you could gain more mechanical advantage and ease in operation with gears and pulleys and flywheels and so on. <laughs> The fourth major step in the evolution of the washing machine involved application of power sources to these machines with flywheels and pulleys and so on. It's debatable which came first, but people would run these with uh, internal combustion engines, steam engines, electric motors, and so on. And now here's where we started to really ease the effort in doing washing machines with the application of external power sources. <laughs> 1937, Bendix introduced the automatic washing machine. Now, the lady could put the clothes in the machine, punch a button or turn a dial, and come back perhaps in an hour, and the, the laundry would be washed and spin dry and ready to hang on the line or put into a dryer. I'd like to take and do a little bit uh, more with your education, I'd like to teach you how to sex a washing machine. In general, you should refer to a washing machine as she, like a battleship. Well, all, most all washing machines are female, and I only have two washing machines in my museum that are male, and this is one of them. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to him. You, you can add to your resume that you indeed know how to sex a wash machine. Okay, day one was when we retired, we bought a motor home and we headed toward Maine uh, just to have lobster on the East Coast. And uh, by the time we got to Iowa with that motor home, we stopped for lunch by what turned out to be a farm auction. It was at a, uh, uh, their um, uh, auction. My aunt said to Lee, uh, you can have anything that you want. And he picked out this old wash machine. Uh, that's the very first one that he got. I seen this old Maytag, looked pretty neat. And I said, well, I'd, I'd like to have that. 
So I raised my hand and sure enough, I got it. We had to put it up on top of the motorhome, a 200 pound thing. And uh, as it turned out, by the time we got to Maine, I had four machines up there. And Barbara kept complaining, we're gonna cave in the roof. Well, then I had to buy a trailer. By the time we got back to Iowa, I had overloaded that trailer, bent the springs, blew out the tires, and had to buy another trailer, a bigger one. The um, trailer got bigger and bigger, didn't it? We started out with a fairly small one. And uh, we got home with 13 machines, and that started everything. And that's when he really honed in on wash machines. <laughs> He became an addict. <laughs> they may take two days to make it to the border of Colorado. I mean, they enjoyed it a lot more than what we do today. You know, we hop on I-70 and try to road trip overnight kind of thing. Years following, we'd take a motorhome trip with a big trailer, and we'd go just everywhere, wander aimlessly hunting for wash machines. When you find an old washing machine, generally, uh, I tell people it looks like a chunk of dog meat. It's junk. One of the favorite places to find a, an antique washing machine is in a dump or a junkyard. You're surprised at where you find uh, these machines or where he finds these. Junk. Just he'd have a box full of, uh, just look like uh, wood. And one time we were crossing into Canada and uh, this lady, she made me put in writing, I would not leave this junk in Canada. I, I have to say that it kind of took me back for a little bit. It's always interesting to watch him work on things. We get home and he'd turn it into a wash machine. <laughs> what I delight in doing is taking this junk and making it into a piece of history that people will look at. And he has the full range of equipment out there from bead blasting to things like that. Well, I bring it here in my shop. I set it on a rotating table. I tear it completely apart. Every last screw, everything comes apart. They're full of decades old grease. So what I do with these cast iron parts, I'll take them, I'll throw them in my wood burning stove and get them red hot, burn the grease out. And then sand the wood and then after all the stuff is cleaned up and I repaint it, I oil the wood and uh, put it back together. And if he doesn't know how to do something, he'll research it and figure out what's an easy way uh, to do it. Like I say, it's become an obsession. I do it now full time, all the time. Used to, I'd spend 10 hours a day, seven days a week. To but I'm, I'm not that speedy anymore. And as folks would come around, I'd, I'd call her and I said, uh, I've got a hobby back here. You want to see it? And, well, pretty soon it became so popular that I didn't have time to show them. So I set up the idea of tours. When I give a tour, I kind of expect folks to pay attention. Enough. Is that fair enough? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's, uh, and I'll give you a quiz now and then. Let's start with one. How do you pronounce F O L K? How do you pronounce the white of an egg? See, I'm in deep, deep trouble. Since when is the white the yolk? I want to see all the different types of washing machines on this tour, you know, from the old ones to modern day. I can't imagine how there would be that many different varieties. Well, one of the first things that uh, folks ask me, why washing machines? And uh, everyone needs a hobby. And uh, so I looked around, I'm not a good fisherman. I don't play golf and I detest bungee jumping. So I picked washing machine. I expect to see on this uh, a lot of different types of washing machines. 
during the summertime, I probably give on an average of four or five tours a week, but they're all scheduled. A tour that used to take 10 minutes now takes full two hours. I like to have fun with it. I, I, I like to use little anecdotes and, and uh, humorous things. You know where Chubby Checker got the twist? These are 1930s apartment-sized machines. By the way, this is a girl, this is a boy. That's a true story. Uh, it was pretty amazing. I, it was very impressive. I love giving tours. Uh, I like to show people, uh, you know, there's some pride in having done that. And, uh, but I, I love to show people the unexpected because when you go in there, it is somewhat unexpected to see that whole mass of, uh, of wash machines. The knowledge in the collection are fantastic and I, he called it a hobby. I, I would say it's a little bit more of a passion. Look at him. I like to show them to have fun at doing this uh, and show them the history along the way of, of the wash machine. It's just fun. It was really impressive. So he's, he's got a wealth of knowledge and I just hope you know that he can share it with everybody. It's fun finding them. It's fun fixing them. It's fun showing them. Every aspect of it is, is fun. Well, the book I, I wrote uh, uh, about 10 years ago now, the title of my book is Save Women's Lives, uh, A History of Wash Machines. Where I got the title of the book was, it's imprinted on the first mass-produced electric wash machine. I thought it was such a noble thought that it deserved being the title of a book. It does have the history of wash machines. It tells how we collected them. I described something about patents and bits and pieces of the advertising I've collected. I show you decals and, and so on, but it's, uh, it's not a bestseller by any means. But uh, you learn a lot about publishing a book, and this, which is all nice experience. It's well on my resume. To be a wash machine collector, you gotta have three attributes, and one is the space. You, you need to be insane to do this. Uh, how many wash machine collectors do you know? And the third is to have a saint for a wife. It's been a joy. We've uh, traveled all over the country, met wonderful, wonderful people, and I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed uh, picking up wash machines with Lee. We've had a great time. It's been wonderful. And I'm getting to the age where I'd like to seriously find a home for my collection. It's a history we ought not to lose, and I'm literally trying to give it away. I'm stupid, I'm still buying wash machines, and I, and I want to give the collection away. What he challenges us is to keep the collection whole. And people wonder uh, what we're going to do with it, and that, has, uh, that just never uh, enters my mind what, what will happen to it, uh, because it's been a joy. So that's the thing that, that I hone in on, instead of wondering about the future. I just enjoy the present. <laughs> it's my intention to make people take a different attitude not and to care. And that's one of the thrusts of my collecting is, is people should care about that. It's a part of our history. They're just a lot of neat, different kind of people that um, enjoy this kind of thing, um, which I hope I can be one of those kind of people. Everything is fun. I recommend it. If you need something to do, I'd recommend it. <laughs>